in terms of now identifying if somebody is at home uh, because we've still drawn the thin line mm -hmm. how does one go about identifying that this is actually Alzheimer's um, with Alzheimer's especially with the early stages mm -hmm. uh, what happens we in the medical field we depend on the history from the relatives we get a lot of history just to understand when they started losing their memory what has been happening and then there's a diagnosis that can be done uh, through the imaging where you do a CT scan it will not conclusively give you an answer it's Alzheimer's and uh, the worst being Alzheimer's you conclusively tell someone you had Alzheimer's maybe after they've died after you do the post-mortem uh, but normally we depend mostly on, on history, on history. Mm -hmm. but uh, when it comes to medication we don't have cure for it and the medications that are there are just to subside uh, to make the symptoms become less mm -hmm. or not severe as they were but uh, what we really advocate for and that's why uh, being I had started an organization called at home healthcare Kenya mm -hmm. where we partnered with Alzheimer's Association to see how we can help people because there is an intervention where because someone with Alzheimer's doesn't know whatever they are doing is not normal but as as people we can help and we, these are we came up with something called behavioral intervention and with behavioral intervention it's with a normal person to change your perception about that person mm -hmm. because to them everything is normal mm -hmm. in their world it's in their world it's is normal okay but mm -hmm. to us we are the ones who are seeing whatever they are doing is different mm -hmm. and uh, once you do the behavioral intervention it actually improves even the relationship between the person with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. And the caregiver. And the caregiver. Yes. Now, some of the, 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 the symptoms that we've mentioned here, mm -hmm. I, I, I think, are extreme, yes. but it must have a place where it starts. Yes. And those are some of the things maybe I'd want us to, for, for, our, for our viewers to know, mm -hmm. so that you're aware right from the word go. Mm -hmm. Then, even by the time you're coming to a caregiver, it's not when it's so late. Mm -hmm. When, like her, uh, he's already gone to a point where he's been treated for several years. So, what are some of those signs that you'll um, identify that this may be Alzheimer's creeping in? the very early stages in the very early stages with Alzheimer's what happens uh, when the brain is affected it affects a center in the brain called hippocampus mm -hmm. and in the hippocampus this is where storage of short-term memory is stored so you will tend to find one they'll come they've forgotten their children's name or they keep on repeating a story they mm -hmm. tell you this story and then they repeat it again like, like I can tell you like they've never said it before mm -hmm. and when you try to tell them you had told me this story they'll keep on repeating it again and then they'll start because now once the short-term memory is lost they're left with the long-term memory it's mm -hmm. like they live in the past so they'll talk more of people who even died long time ago that like they were with them at that point mm -hmm. they'll talk they'll talk about them like it's the present mm -hmm. not the past mm -hmm. so these are some of the early signs that you'll tend to find but as you progress they go on losing the sense of touch the hearing and the visual and as it continues it will reach a point now where we give them a prognosis meaning they can live according to scientific proof they can live from 8 to 20 years before they 